Today we're going to show you how to mount this Han 6 shower super sexy fixed bridge on this really sexy Claro Walnut Strat style guitar. I don't know if everyone here has been following my YouTube channel, but I basically do in-depth guitar building um, basically the same way that I do as I teach electric guitar construction at a local community college. And I go through multi-part series. Well, this series of building a Strat style guitar, I was on part nine of 15 parts to this series uh, when I decided on this guitar that I was gonna use the Schaller Hans 6 bridge. And it's gonna be an HSS style guitar, but it was just calling and begging to be a fixed bridge. And I kind of looked in my inventory, and said, I don't know, would be a good thing to use? And just the contemporary look of the Hans 6 um, fixed bridge, I thought would be super ideal for this guitar. So as I was going through my part nine and, and about to install it and figure out you know, and show everybody how to install this bridge because it is a complex bridge. I decided, you know what, why don't I break this out of the series and do it as this independent standalone video so that it'll hopefully reach more people and it'll help more people because this bridge uh, is one that causes a lot of confusion and if it's not done right, it, it could cause issues as far as, um, things being out of alignment. So I wanted to show you how to do that. Now, um, in full disclosure, um, part of what I do is I sell templates, all right? And I sell a lot of templates and they're not like any other template that you've ever seen, I can guarantee you that. They all use off-body alignment points so I can swap from one template to another template to another template from the front to the back and always have perfect dead on center alignment, plus or minus a thousandths, you know, or right around there. It's that accurate. And plus there's safety measures that I build into these based upon my experience of teaching out of a school that has a varying degree of of people and experience and stature, strength, and things like that that I incorporate in these templates. So if you've never seen any of my videos before and you've not seen my channel, you're not familiar with it, this is what I do. I do over-articulating, deep-dive explanations that probably take the experienced person and it's like they they move on. But if, you, if you're looking for knowledge and you're looking for insight and you're looking for personal experience, um, this is the right place to be because this is what I do. So today I'm gonna show you how we use my template system in order to guarantee perfect accuracy and we're gonna install the Hans 6 bridge, shallow bridge system on this Strat style guitar. <clears throat> All right, so just in case some of you are not familiar, this is the basic concept of it. We've got these off-body alignment pins or quarter inch dowel pins that are run through um, the acrylic template which has heat pressed into it hardened steel drilling bushings of the quarter inch size. So we can reuse them over and over again. It doesn't, the templates, and they don't wear out from drilling those holes. And we drill those holes all the way through the front to the back so that templates can be transferred from the front to the back to achieve alignment purposes, either a tremolo cover, or in this case, the string through guide block that needs to mount on the back. All right, and it has to be precisionly mounted in the exact location that sometimes drawing a center line and measuring with a ruler isn't going to get you good enough. So to support the effort installing the Han 6 bridge, uh, since I've got the alignment pins, I basically made a custom template set that is designed for doing that. Now it's two pieces. One part goes on the front and that will give us the whole locations for the string through and for the two mounting bolts that go through the back to to basically sandwich the guitar in between hardware all right and so this one will do it now 
All I need is the bottom bridge portion. Now I just happen to throw a couple humbuggers in there just in case I want to use it as a later time to, you know, to do different variations on other guitars. I can hot swap the templates back and forth and pick a humbucker from here and a single coil from another or a P90 from another and I can swap them back and forth. We in fact on our website do have something called a fit all universal template system that is designed when you want to make your own body shape and you want to make sure the neck the pickups and the bridge is dead perfect. That's what that system is for. Uh, for those who want to make a Strat or a Tele or maybe kind of a V-style guitar or Explorer-style guitar, we've got complete template sets for doing very specific vintage instruments. All right, but this case, we are gonna take this. Now these are all acrylic, and normally I'll peel all the paper off because part of the benefit of acrylic is the fact that you can see through it and you can see where that placement is going before you actually start doing stuff. You can see the bigger picture by seeing the entire guitar. That's the benefit. It's also harder, more rigid. It doesn't compress like MDF compresses, and therefore it won't change the tolerances over time like that will. I had somebody mention on uh, on a a comment on on somebody else's video that thought that acrylic would be damaged by by bearings overheating and if your bearing is running that hot you got bigger issues i'll tell you that we're going to start with the top template and all we're going to do with this is put our alignment pins in place i just like to tap them in and they don't need to be full height they just need to be snug all right, and that now sets the alignment for the front. The only thing that I need, you can see the humbucker here lines perfectly up with the humbucker because all of my templates are interchangeable. And, and if I wanted a humbucker there, it would have been perfect. But the single coil lines up um, at least one edge with it because that's the way it's designed. This is the critical point for the Han 6 is we take a punch and we mark all the places that we're going to have to drill holes all right so this is going to be where the strings go through all of these holes that need to be drilled to any specification are designated with eighth inch holes all right so now i've got the six strings and the two mounting holes that's the only thing i need and i'm ready to drill those holes and i have to figure out what size now, when we go to drill these holes, I'm going to use a Brad Point style drill bit because the little dimple that we just made is going to track perfectly with that Brad Point bit. And normally I'll take a pencil and just kind of put a little coloration in that hole so I can see it a little easier. But this dark wood is going to be very difficult. So I'm going to take a welder's pencil, which is silver in color, and I'm just going to twist a little bit in there until... I get a slight bit of color just to help me out. Now the string through holes, I'm gonna use an eighth of an inch. Uh, it, 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 there's a variation of what it can be. It doesn't have to be anything precise. I'm just gonna use an eighth inch bit for those. And then the two mounting holes need to be five millimeters. Now what I'm gonna do with those is they go all the way through, but I'm only gonna drill a portion of that, maybe whatever, a half inch, inch, whatever from the front, and then I'm gonna drill the other ones from the back and that will allow me to, um, to not drill all the way from one side to the other and have some sort of blowout you know, in the wood. So I'm gonna drill part from the front and then part from the back. And you'll see what I mean as we get into this. All right, now on this one, I am gonna drill, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half down. I don't wanna go all the way through the back. I, I have to route an area out, but I, I wanna save room to route it out and then re-drill those holes Okay, now our five millimeter holes. And again, I'm just gonna go about an inch. And that'll be good enough. Now 
that we got all the front holes started, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna use the back template. And the same basic principle applies. I'm gonna put the pins in here to anchor down the template at exactly the spot that it needs to be in order to line up with the front. We can go in the five millimeter holes that are going into the back plus the ferrules that we need a 13 millimeter hole to recess is going to go into there. So we've got those marked. Now this one, we really don't need to mark this slot. We just need to route it out with the bit that can go inside of there. So I'm thinking a quarter inch flush trim bit is going to be our best bet on that case. Now what we need to do this is we need a very small pattern bit, okay? So the cutting will be coming down, the bearing will ride on the template, and that will give us uh, an outline which will then clear all the insides too on this bit. The problem is this is not a super strong bit and that bearing can be a little sketchy. And when we first plunge down in, we've got to preset the bit to the right depth um, otherwise, if that bearing doesn't hit the template, you're going to ruin the template. So in this case, what I'm going to do is actually clear out some of that material in the center. Now I can go to a drill press and I can do that. But in this case, what I'm going to do is just use a brass bushing guide that's um, 5 16 with a quarter inch bit riding inside of it. This allows me to plunge down to my stop and clear out the inside minus the difference of the brass um, guides walls, right? And that way I only have to come back with that bearing, with that bearing guided uh, pattern bit just to clean up the inside. It's a little bit safer to do that way. So that's how I'm gonna do it here. We wanna set the depth. So I'll go in, I'll bottom out the bit and then I'll set the depth. Now we want to take this um, down 0.225 inches, which is 5.7 millimeters. So just since this is a clearing action alone, I think I'm gonna set it to five millimeters and then we can kind of adjust it from there. All right, so it won't go any deeper than five millimeters from the surface of the wood. Uh, and then we'll clear up the rest with precision cutting, uh, clearing that out. All right, so we've got that set. We're just barely punching through the holes that we drilled from the other side. So that's actually really, really good. Really good depth. Now we'll come in closer so you can see. Here's the bushing guide that I was using. There's the quarter inch bit that I was using with it. And we've cleared everything out, but just a little bit of the edge and a little bit extra depth. And this is the bit, it's a specialty bit that we're gonna be using to clean it out. and. That will just do a great job. This is a very delicate operation, okay? So this is the bar, uh, the string bar, ball end bar that we've got to put in there. And, and because of that, I want the most visibility that I can get. So I am going to set my depth stop again. And we want just a little bit over five. All right, that's the full depth. Now I wanna make sure that I'm riding on, the bearing is riding on the cutting, and it is. So I think we're, we're good all the way down to that depth uh, for starters. Look at those edges, how flush and tight they are and it didn't strain the bit whatsoever. And all of our holes have now come through. Looks good. Don't make the job any harder than it has to be, all right? Precision tools and templates are tools um, is, is really where it's at. All right, I'm just punching these again. I forgot if I already did them or not, but uh, we just did them again. So this is everything that needs to be done with this template. And so now we are done with that. And we have two holes that we've marked on the back. And this is my environmental series. I joke about that on my, uh, my Strat build series is that 
I took all the extra pieces that were cutoffs from other bodies that were glued up and rather than throwing them away I made another guitar body out of it because I don't like to waste anything and I think it's kind of cool looking but that's not the point as much as just making a guitar out of materials that would have other been otherwise been thrown away so that's why I call it my environmental series now all we need to drill is a large hole for the ferrule that the bolt drops into and then the hole for the bolt itself. Now the ferrule is 13 millimeters in diameter and the bolt requires a hole about five millimeters. Whenever you're drilling holes of different sizes stacked one on top of the other, you always drill the largest one first, okay? Because the brad point bit will make a dimple in the bottom of, uh, of that six millimeter deep hole for the 13 millimeter diameter hole, right? And then that dimple at the bottom can be used to track straight the five millimeter hole needed for this bolt. Okay, that makes sense? All right, just wanted to cover that because that's what I do. All right, we've got our 13 millimeter bit. We're gonna drill six millimeters down and I've got it lined up on the dimple that was made with the punch and let's go. Here's, here's a little trick. Walk it a bit backwards by hand to refine the center rather than just going for it because you're, you're gonna miss by a little tiny bit and this hole is precision. Uh, so, all right, we gotta go deeper. I'm gonna just go a little bit at a time and then I'm going to check and do it again. All right, that is six right on the money. Now we're gonna to move to the five millimeter bit, go inside that other dimple and connect with the hole coming from the front. It takes longer to talk about it than it does to do it. If you notice the, uh, the body shaking a little bit, it's trying to find the center, right? When I get that bit in there, it'll try to find the center. And once it does, I'll lock it in and then just continue to plunge all the way through. Well, should we check the installation? We may have to touch these up in the future because we'll need to be pulling back out to do any sanding and we want them to be flush, but we'll do that on the drill press, but manually just kind of turn nice and easy to kind of get that ease down to the right depth. And this should be fine. We'll put that right in there. So that is nice and flush. We do have two retaining screws that we need to put in there, but that is easy. We can just simply take our punch and punch those two locations, pre-drill it. Probably don't even need to pre-drill it. They're almost like the same screws used on uh, the back of uh, tuning machines. All right, and then that will drop right in. And this one will drop right in. Let's get this ready so you can see.
Let's clean up the top a little bit so it looks, as they call it, purdy. And this is perfectly based in CAD, applied to the template, applied to the alignment pins of the, of the guitar, perfectly right at the scale line where it needs to be. And that is beautiful. We'll give you a close up of how easy that installation was right on the center line. Holes perfectly through. That's gonna look sharp on this guitar. Might as well zoom in close and see the back also. Look how flush that is. And there's that Clara Walnut neck. All right, my friends, that right there is what I believe to be the best most accurate and the easiest way to install the sometimes complicated Han 6 fixed bridge from Schaller. And remember, no matter what you do, start with excellence. You saw the guy still here? Jeez. Go home.